Thank you all for coming uh, out to support uh, the Equality Riders. Um, this is a very significant and important night for me tonight. Um, when I first thought up the Equality Ride uh, three years ago, I had a hard time imagining that it would take place even once. And to be here now, a year after Equality Ride 2006 took place, on the eve of the Equality Ride 2007, that is sure to have twice the impact as the first journey. It's an incredible moment for me, and I'd like to welcome you all uh, to the Equality Ride 2007 uh, and to our official sending service. Uh, it means a lot that you're here in spirit, uh, in your physical presence, to, uh, to lend support to this ride. And so, I think the Equality Ride is important just for that simple reason. Regardless of what happens this year, you're going to go to colleges across America and bear witness with your presence to a simple truth that one day, one day, America will wake up and realize. And when that day comes, you all, 52 riders, and you all in the room who support her, will be able to look back and say, we were there that day. <coughs> to bear witness is that simple truth. And you can have solace in the fact that you were part of, even a small part of, the change that made that day a reality. And then Jake brought the message of this injustice and talked about Liberty University. And I realized at that moment, knowing of that suffering and knowing of that pain actually made my world far more open to me than it ever had been because I finally knew what I had to fight for, what I was obligated to fight for, and connected me to all of humanity in a completely different way. Um, when you've got something to fight for, when you know that you care about and love somebody that you haven't even met yet because you want them to be free, um, that gives me a deep sense of meaning in my life. Uh, iconic chapters in, in what will become our history. Uh, that we add, that will add to Stonewall, and will add to um, ACT UP, and will add to you know so many things that 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 uh, have taken shape over the last 30 years to bring us to where we are today. But yet we have still so far to go. Um, but what our movement really comes down to is is those individual stories you described. It's, it's the it's the changing of one heart at a time. Even though these are you know these are big buses full of of, of young people who are filled with with moral righteousness and indignation and, and, and a lot of energy and fervor and, and we're on Newsweek and we're in the, in the TVs. What we're trying to do is, is change single hearts one at a time. And we often talk about how our movement is about reaching one heart at a time in our personal lives but also in our professional lives and, and creating uh, uh, ultimately a movement of social change and, and, uh, and changing hearts for, for justice.
that's going to change their life. That's going to make them think about this issue differently. We could talk about the administrators at these colleges who have a difficult task of what in the world are they going to do? A big gay bus is coming to their town. <laughs> that ain't good. But, but they find out after it's all said and done that it's not that bad. And every one of them, whether it be Jerry Falwell or President Litfin from Wheaton, every one of them, I'm confident, thinks about this issue differently as a result of our journey. He says we can draw upon the lessons that were learned in the 1960s um, for, and use that for inspiration and instruction. I just talked to him, I want to let him know that. And look, read this letter um, that he wrote for you, March 3rd, 2007. Dear 2007 Soul Force Equality Writers, 46 years ago, young students dedicated to nonviolence and racial equality joined together on interracial bus rides into the segregated South. The courage of these students in the face of deep racial ignorance and hatred distinguished them as visionary leaders of their time and paved the way for significant civil rights reform. Today, proud of their achievements, we continue to strive towards equality for all members of our society. Whether hatred and discrimination are rooted in racial prejudice, sexism, or religious fanaticism, we are still called today to confront him through radical and loving acts of protest. The ride on what you are about to endeavor will bring you across this country to schools where hurtful policies discriminating against LGBT students and faculty deprive all of their students from a healthy educational atmosphere where openness and honesty are the foundations of one's pursuit of knowledge. Your actions will undoubtedly bring courage to LGBT students, faculty, and allies at these schools as well as start important dialogues on these campuses surrounding traditionally unchallenged vestiges of discrimination. Thank you for your willingness to be part of such a historic effort and God's being. Sincerely, I'm Keith Ellison, member of Congress of the Minnesota State. You are part of the movement of Almighty God, not simply doing your will. You're part of a movement that goes back since the beginning of human existence. Does this oppression that you are fighting against is an oppression that began five, six thousand years ago? I look out and I see you and I remember uh, myself in 1950 as a 16-year-old high school senior in Ohio. And hearing the call from Byron Ruskin and George House to come to New York, to Washington, D.C., rather, with other high school students so we could learn nonviolence and we could begin to desegregate Washington, D.C. I see that in you all. I see that in you all. And I know that the enemies in these, at these schools are frightened to death about your gun. You all be brave. Don't sit there till you die. You walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet to share with you the last bite of bread. I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams when all your hopes are sinking let me show you what love means love can build a bridge between It's time.